Other than the boom, do you have any other projects going on? Uh, actually, I have a uh, show that I'm trying to launch, uh, and that's why Phil wanted to elicit my reaction, called Comedy Cookoff. Uh-huh. And I have, uh-huh. six, yeah, I have back 60 there. comedians committed to being on the show. And These it's a, comedians are committed? They are committed. <laughs> well, you let them out to do yeah, the show? Previously committed. And they'll get out for <laughs> the pass. weekend. Wow. Yeah. To do it. But they have uh, letters of intent. And we have chefs with, with letters. And a note intent. from the doctor. And, uh, right. A note from the doctor. <laughs> and uh, they have their vaccinations. <laughs> and they're going to um, come on with a, a chef and cook as a team. And the hook is, is that the chef can't cook. He's got to talk the comedians through it. Oh. And... He is you a know, master a comedian, chef. you know, comedians don't cook. As a rule, we order pizza, we go out and get stuff. Mm-hmm. I happen to be a gourmet chef. Y'all doing okay? I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And how is everything back there? You want another mule? Yes. Okay. I'm getting a kick Great. out of this. You need us to come back mule, there? Man. Come back where? And, Square anybody away for you? Are you all right? Oh, no, 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 I'm good. I mean, I'm, we're big, everyone's being very. You know, nice we're tough today. guys. We're former bouncers <laughs> for Chuck E. Cheese's. You. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you if anyone's like acting out. Or as my kids call it, Chuck E. Jesus. If they're acting out, that's okay. okay. Acting out is okay. Acting up, that's a little Acting up, I will tell you. Okay, good. good. Games? Kind of a that Mickey was, Mouse outfit. That was Chuck E. Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a so tell us more about the show. Yeah, go ahead. So the, the comedians uh, have to. You know, the comedians have to do the cooking. And the chefs talk them through it. And uh, I just think it's it's a great opportunity for funny and cooking. And I watch a lot of cooking shows. I watch a lot of the Food Network. And rarely do you see something that's entertaining. He's starving that's for funny, something that's both that's edible really and funny. funny you know? Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> edible and funny. Fungy. Well, and as a comedian, you know, you're starving anyway. Oh, oh right. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Audience, but anyway, you know. so yeah, that's one of my projects I have going. And I'm, uh, I'm actually, uh, this week I start at the Special Olympics here in L.A. And I'm going to oh, be right. announcing the tennis matches for the Special Olympics, which I'm looking forward to being a part of. Is that going to be broadcast? I'm honored to be a part of. Mm-hmm. I think parts of it are going to be broadcast on ESPN, yeah. That'd be good. Um, you know, little snippets just to let the world know what's going on. Um, I'm helping my wife out, who is a, one of the top ice choreographers in the world, and she's getting ice clubs around the country and around the world, for that matter, to participate in National Dance Day, mm-hmm. which is coming up uh, July 25th. And Nigel Lithgow on uh, the producer of uh, the Dance, yes. he's got Dizzy Feet, and he, that's his foundation. So he sponsors National Dance Day, and so I've been helping my wife videotape that and get that out to uh, to the world. And you know, there's just never a dull moment. No, there's it's, always it's something to do. It's, and then Phil, you have uh, you did some voiceover work for a Pixar project. Yeah, I, the last one I did was Inside Out. <clears throat> right. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, Which is doing really well in the box. It is office, doing well right? in the box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. His voice is doing really well yeah. in the box. <laughs> That's it. Everybody it's else right. pretty much ignores the rest of the film. No. <laughs> and they'll go, is that Phil Proctor? And I've been working on their is next that? one, which is The Good Dinosaur. Yeah. Amish dinosaur. An well, Amish dinosaur. How does that ha- well, that because of Goshen, right? Well, no. It, it, actually, <laughs> that's, why they, that's why they hired me on to the to do the job because they knew that you know I come from a Amish background and I, I kind of understand the thinking of the Amish. You know, uh, but uh, the, the basic idea is, of course, that the comet that killed the dinosaurs miss, misses Earth, ah. and so the dinosaurs evolve into an intelligent farm, ah, you know, vegetarian like society. 
and the, the humans are the minority. And it's it's a wonderful, interesting. Story. The humans are the food. No, they, no, no, they're, they're not, not carnivores. They're not carnivores. They're not. Okay. So anyway, so the T Rex didn't make it. No, no. But I, what I basically have been doing with my my career, uh, I'm working on my memoirs, right. which is harder than it sounds, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, I've been collaborating with a wonderful writer named Brad Schreiber. Uh, since uh, I, I find myself so busy, and thanks to Jamie, even busier than I was before, that it's very hard for me to sit down and actually do the writing. But I can do the talking like I'm doing now. Yeah. Yeah. And so I thank you very much. You're very welcome. He transcribed. And he transcribed oh, it, fantastic. and he's written the first draft. And now what I'm trying to do is <clears throat> to, to uh, uh, move it around so that it tells the story uh, in, in my particular vernacular and my way. Uh, and it's it's challenging. It's very challenging, but it's exciting. And event maybe by next year I'll have something that I can get out there. The the thing that's sad about books these days is you can't really find a publisher anymore. So no. you're not looking at like oh, self publish. I got a yeah, book. Yeah, you can self publish. It's all self publishing. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's downloading online. Mm -hmm. It's you know uh, on demand and all of that. And uh, our uh, our cinematographer editor uh, and crew. Uh, Andy Thomas is going He's to help great. me with the production. He does boomers project. for us. He's he does brilliant. boomers for us. Brilliant. Boy, if he I lived awesome. out here, that's what I'd be doing. But I also, I'm, guy, a, yeah. I'm a big booster of anything that has to do with audio theater. I've worked a lot yeah. with uh, the golden age of uh, uh, Pulp Fiction, L. Ron Hubbard's short stories. Uh, many, many years ago now, Jim Meskimen, who is a brilliant, brilliant impressionist, yeah. impressionist, and a, a he's very stolen a few jobs from me. I'll oh you. man, don't you don't Not want to stolen. compete? Rightfully, no, you don't want to rightfully. compete with no. with Jim though. He's he's absolutely brilliant, and he does a wonderful show online called Impress Me, by the way, which you you should uh, watch and support. But uh, he uh, uh, was one of the people responsible for bringing me in to record uh, about 150 of L. Ron Hubbard's stories about five or six years ago now. And they're uh, they're releasing these stories because he was the king of Pulp Fiction. Right. The long before the Scientology and and the uh, Dianetics and all that stuff, uh, he he wrote like a thousand Pulp Fiction stories under different names, and in all genres, pirate stories, science fiction, zombie stories, westerns, um, uh, detective stories, arson stories, uh, crime stories. You know, I mean, uh, reporter stories. It, amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It's he made up a lot of stories. He made That's a for lot sure. of crap. Yeah, I, he <laughs> was good at it. Yeah. Uh, well, I say no more. But <laughs> in, any, in any event, uh, great fun to record with all these wonderful uh, voiceover artists, and they're releasing them in stinking batches. Okay. <laughs> you don't need no stinking, stinking batches. batches. <laughs> right. So, so about every six months or so, eight or nine of them. They're, they're releasing some right now. Yeah, there they go. Look. Oh my God. Those are the, those are the westerns. The arson stories, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, but but what they also do to promote them is that they have a live, they have a theater where they do live audio presentations of various stories mm -hmm. every Saturday down in Hollywood, the Golden Age of Pulp Fiction stories, the L. Ron Hubbard Theater, Beautiful. and when when I'm able, I'll go down and participate in those as well. So you're constantly busy. You're always. I try busy. to be constantly busy. The next project I hope I'll be doing is for our wonderful theater company, not our. And and the Antius Company mm, Antius. in North Hollywood. Antius, come see us. The Antius Classical Theater Company, which my wife Melinda Peterson and I have been members of for 15 years now. And the last show of the season is Uncle Vanya, Jadja Vanya Baruski, and I'm hoping to play a role in that. Uh, so I'm waiting now to, to see to, to, if I'm cast. And that would take me through the end of the year, give me some something to do theatrically, which I adore. Theater is still my... My first. Oh, you know, we, we should mention. We should mention that next season, uh, starting in September, we're going to do a new Boomers on a Bench, uh -huh. and we're going to have guests. Yes, we're going to have guests drop in. So if you come out here again on the bench, you can come you can sit, sit on, on the, the bench, bench with us, and, and we'll interview you. Or yeah, since I can't be out here, you can work my name into a story. I will. We could do that. Sure. I will. I'll yeah. work your name into Second an awful well, story, kind of like the one I told about Vegas. I also <laughs> still do voiceovers. My latest one is I play a villain. Uh, a villainous businessman in the new Batman game, Batman ah. Ark, Arkham, oh. Arkham Knight. Arkham, yeah, yeah. I'm a character named, I think my name is Simon Stagg, 
and I'm working with the Joker to try to develop some kind of... What voice do you use for that? What is oh, I can never remember. I, I, some yeah, kind I know, of crazy I scientist voice. I don't know. All these voices have, in his head. I have to yeah. listen. You know, you use so many voices. Whenever you go into a session, because, you know, you'll do a session, and yeah. it'll be three months, yeah. and they work on it, and then they bring you in to do some more, and they say, please, can I hear what I did? What do they sound like? And they'll play it for you. Then you match your own voice. You yeah, know. I, I've done that myself. <laughs> recorded something, and I went... I can't remember how I did the voice, so I had to go back and listen to it. To yeah, well, yeah, they'll, they'll play it for you in the for, session. For people who don't know uh, anything about us, I'm Howard on the Rugrats. I was I did that for 15 years. I was Tommy the Toy on the Rugrats. Tommy the Toy. Uh, I was. I'm the, I am the drunken French monkey on the Doctor Doolittle movies. That's right. I am a social drinker, and. Uh, uh, I've done oh just tons and tons and tons and tons of other voices in uh, uh, I, I did a voice in Spirited Away the anime. And Still doing okay. We're doing good. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, great. and I was the the the, the, the villain Doctor Vidic in uh, in uh, Assassin's Creed for yeah. four four years. I love oh, that game. Wow. I play that game right now. That's great. That's the one I'm playing. I adore that. Well, game. I made the mistake of auditioning. They wanted a guy named Hoffman for gear. Uh, Gears of Gears War, of War. Uh, which I've done four of them so far, yeah. and I, I auditioned with this kind of Blake Clark oh, voice, you know, when I went in like this, bad. and now when I go do it, I can't talk for two days afterwards, mm -hmm. but I'm happier than a baby in a bear full of titties, don't get me wrong, <laughs> you know, and I'm just this Marine that does all these ad-libs, and they love me for my ad-libs, but now I suffer, but we did go to the <laughs> launch of uh, Gears of War 2, and it was up at Universal Studios, yeah, this is and GameStop, had this big party, and it was a midnight launch of Gears of War 2. And there was hundreds of people, seven, 800 people out there waiting to see, and guys dressed up in the uniforms, you know, and then the DJ came back, and all the voiceover artists were standing backstage. Uh, DiMaggio and yeah. uh, John Michael DiMaggio. Goff and John Michael DiMaggio. Goff. Yeah. Great guys. And um, we're standing there, and the DJ says, okay, guys, I'm going to bring you out on stage in a few minutes. I'm going to introduce you. And I want you to go out there and yell your favorite line from the game. <laughs> <laughs> and we looked at each other. Uh, yeah, but, what? It's what? been six months since I got <laughs> you. Just the read game. them. You don't have to but, like, memorize them. Right so there, right? while we were waiting to go out, I sneaked out into the crowd. And I got recognized. Hey, it's Jamie. It's Hoffman from Gears of War. Hey, hey, man, how you doing? I said, let me let me ask you a question. What's your favorite line I did in the game? <laughs> Smart said, guy. Kick butt, you son of a bitch. And I said, yeah, that was my favorite too. Thank you. <laughs> I walked backstage, and John DiMaggio went out there. Went, yeah, his character, and John just waved, and said nothing. And Michael Goff went out. Oh, no, just waved nothing. And I went out, and I said, kick. But you son of a bitch. Or no, it's eat boot. That's eat what boot. It was. Eat boot, you son of a bitch. And they went nuts. They went nuts. All right, there's children that just walked into the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're start, babies. You yeah. have to start behaving they yourself. They, no, babies can't We're even. We're going to be wrapping this up here anyway. Okay. You think so? Uh, that's that's yeah. right. That's great. Thank right. you. So, um, check them out uh, on the internet and look them up. Uh, Google them. It's the same size. Facebook them. Poke him. Don't he dabble. Can. He's Don't the one dabble with the big head. I'm the one with the little I'm, head. I have the big head. Remember that. So uh, yes, thank you, Phil Proctor. Thank you, Jamie hey. Elcroft. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for coming Tim out McCoy. here, Tim. And this is it's going to be good. I'll post this sometime very soon here. So two M's. Two thank, M's. Thank you, kids. Let me get my head there in he here. There he is. So Double there's, M McCoy. There's the three shot. That's the real McCoy, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget it. See you next time, podcats. Bye. Adidas. <laughs> Tell us about the Paul Lynn story, Jamie. I thought you'd never ask. I lived in Key West and had a jewelry store in DeBall Street. And I made this belt buckle that if you push the turquoise piece in the middle, the, the buckle opened. Yeah. And um, Paul Lynn walked into my store one day and he was looking in the case and he said, Oh, I love that buckle. And in his voice to him, I said, I call it my quick release. <laughs> he said, really? Let me see. So I showed him the belt buckle. Showed him how you push the turquoise and the belt buckle pops open. He said, oh, I love it. Paid me $350 for it. Wow. From that point on, whenever Paul got a new boyfriend, he'd poke his head in my store and he'd go, Jamie, need another buckle. <laughs> I go, quick release. He said, oh, you betcha. <laughs> so I would actually, you know, arrange for Paul to meet men 
<laughs> on the street in Key West because every time he got a new boyfriend, I made 350 bucks. So oh. <laughs> what can I tell you? But the story is I became really good friends with um, Jim McLaren, his best friend. And Jim was just one of those just great guys who loved to tell stories. And he told the story of a 1957. He went to Warren, Ohio with Paul, who was in Pillow Talk at the time, for the Kenley Players. And Paul said to the owner of the Kenley Players, I've always wanted to try stand-up. Is there a stand-up club in town? Well, in 57 in Warren, Ohio, there was no stand-up club. There were strip joints. Right. So they went to a strip joint. And Paul asked the owner, actually Jim asked in Paul's on Paul's behalf, could my friend, who's an actor from Hollywood and is the Kenley Players, get up on stage and do some stand-up? And the guy said, well, sure, we'll try him out after one of the girls tonight. So, <clears throat> what an unlikely combo! After, after, one of the, after one of the girls had uh, completely taken off everything, um, the guy said, "Well, now we have a special treat—a guy from uh, Warren, Ohio, playing the Kennedy Players in Pillow Clock. Please, please welcome Paul Lynn." Paul walked off the stage. He looked around. Wow, it smells like pussy in here. <laughs> I think. <laughs> And that is a true story. Oh my God. And they loved him after that, right? Wow. <laughs>